go to approve yeah right so let us write the result theorem we want to prove is the following okay let x be in R then there exists a unique m an integer such so that m is less than or equal to x less than m plus 1 I hope all of you know this this is the simple part there is a unique okay okay prove is easy we are done all the enough work what we do is look at all the integers which are less than or equal to x and choose the maximum <laughs> yeah that should be the idea but the unfortunate thing is why do I know given a set of real numbers remember I am looking for the set of integers so let us look at okay I am looking for the set of integers k and so that k is less than equal to x okay and choose the maximum of this set that that will satisfy this problem that sat satisfy this con these conditions right that's obvious right but the problem is okay how do i know given any subset a of r remember s is a subset of integers in particular it's also a subset of r okay so if a is any non empty subset of r why do i know the maximum exists it may or may not exist okay and also even the lub will exist only if a is bounded above right okay so this is the key idea we have to have in mind so what we want to do this is the correct okay so we consider this set right first thing is s is non empty is that clear why because remember okay suppose when if i give a k an integer okay when does k belong to s k must be less than equal to x and i tell you an integer m and m is not in z not in s what does it mean if an integer has to be here it has to satisfy the condition it is less than or equal to x therefore m is not here that means this condition is violated this implies m is greater than x plus uh, m is greater than x is that clear yeah no okay. no doubt okay. now how do i know this is non-empty suppose this is empty okay what does it mean give me any integer m okay then m is greater than x that means that is this implies okay so give me any integer it does not belong to that that means give me any integer that integer has to be greater than x that means x is a lower bound of z yeah it is not empty meaning no m belong to this yeah this is a contradiction because as a corollary to Archimedean property we had already shown the set of integers is neither bounded above nor bounded below is it okay right therefore we know that s is not empty and okay yes then is yes bounded above of course is that clear look at the definition okay yes is bounded above why G give me any integer k in s that k must be less than or equal to x therefore x is an upon why actually i can see this bounded by x right therefore what do i know now s is a non-empty set which is bounded above in r therefore by the LEB property there exists a real number alpha such so that alpha is the LEB of S yeah right this is my alpha right now we have to produce m from here using this alpha 
Notice that intuition will tell you again if I have a subset of integers which is bounded above, intuitively the maximum exists. Do you, yeah? Can you believe that? You just write a sequence infinite set of uh, infinite subset of integers, assume bounded above. You can see it intuitively it should have a maximum. Okay, there is an integer in that set which is greater than or equal to every other element. Okay. So I would expect if the maximum exists, then alpha should be the maximum. You understand? I say at present I know alpha is in R, but I would expect alpha must be an integer itself and it's an element of S. Okay. This is I mean besides our proof, but you should learn to think. Okay. Just a clear cut uh, proof which will score you high marks, that's not the only aim of the my lectures. I just want you to keep thinking. Okay, very good. Now, since alpha is the LUB, we had, we had already seen, if the moment you give me alpha is LUB, then what I should look for? I should look for a number less than alpha, okay, and then get an element of S, okay? So that's what we want to do. Since S is a set of integers, like in again in the Archimedean property, what number I will look for? I will look for alpha minus 1, right? Therefore, I have alpha minus 1 and this is less than alpha. Therefore, alpha minus 1 is not an upper bound of S. If it's not an upper bound of S, what do I know? Therefore, there exists an integer m in S such so that m is strictly greater than alpha minus 1. Remember, alpha is an upper bound therefore where will I mark this m here m should be greater than alpha minus 1 and less than or equal to alpha you understand that ok now let us look at this m is strictly greater than alpha minus 1 ok now ok before we go further ok therefore notice that alpha is an upper bound of yes yes ok and x is also an upper bound alpha is the least upper bound of s but x is an upper bound therefore what is the relation between them so alpha should be less than r equal to x you understand that alpha should be less than r equal to x because x is an upper bound okay keep that in mind now let's look at this m is greater than alpha minus 1 therefore i like an archimedean property proof let us add m plus 1 to both sides therefore what do i know m plus 1 is strictly greater than alpha is that okay now let's look at what can i say about m plus 1 and s yes. remember can m plus 1 be in s if m plus 1 is in s yeah since alpha is an upper bound then n plus 1 should be less than r equal to alpha therefore i conclude m plus 1 is not in s since m plus 1 is not in s we had already seen when an element is not in s if that element is strictly greater than x yeah so this implies in turn m plus 1 is strictly greater than x yeah therefore if I have to mark it it has to be m plus 1 must be here are you following so what do you think I have proved now notice that I have proved m is less than r equal to alpha because alpha is an upper bound but alpha is less than or equal to x because alpha is the least upper bound x is an upper bound but then x is less than m plus 1 so I have proved m is less than r equal to x but strictly less than m plus 1 is that proof ok right so I have proved the existence next is uniqueness ok suppose there exists another integer n such that n is less than or equal to alpha ok sorry n is less than or equal to x and x is strictly less than n plus 1 then I want to claim m must be equal to n suppose not 
then one of them okay suppose m is not equal to n so without loss of generality assume m is strictly less than n therefore what do i know about m plus 1 that will be less than equal to n yeah m is so i have an m okay and this is n then i can go to m plus 1 what do i know okay n must be at least greater than or equal to m plus 1 okay very good now do you see a problem so m plus 1 is less than or equal to x therefore let's look at x so i have the picture i have m i have m plus 1 i have n here and according to me x lies between m and m plus 1 okay my x has to be somewhere here okay somewhere here but remember my x is greater than equal to n therefore it should be somewhere here do you see that that's a contradiction if you don't like this you want a proof you can do that okay how do i do that x is x is less than or equal to n sorry n is less than or equal to x okay now m plus 1 is less than or equal to n right i'm using this okay and I'm also going to use this. And I'm going to use this. So m plus 1 is less than or equal to n. And n is less than or equal to x according to this. But this context is therefore in particular m plus 1 is less than or equal to x. Okay. Now let's look at that this is a contradiction whatever we saw geometrically i am giving a rigorous proof because some teachers do not like the geometry kind of argument but i looking at this geometry only i wrote down the proof is that okay so what i have shown we have shown there exists a unique integer m such that m is less than or equal to x and x is strictly less than m plus one Okay, this M is called the, this M is known as the greatest integer. Less than or equal to X. Okay, it's usually denoted by, I think all of you know, I think in uh, computer language is denoted by this floor function or seal, ceiling function. Is that okay? Now before we end, one more small observation. Okay. Now let's look at M. I want to claim this is the proof is over. But my intuition told me this S yes has to have a maximum the maximum i claim the m which i found is the maximum why that is i have to prove alpha is m if i prove alpha is m then this is an upper bound which belong to the set therefore it must be the maximum this we have seen in the upper bound video right okay so that therefore m equal to maximum of s this will follow okay but why is this true? Okay. What I prove is directly, okay. I claim actually M is at the maximum directly. Okay. Therefore, M is a maximum, then for it must the alpha must be M. It follows. You understand that? So instead of proving this way, I am trying to prove this way. okay why this is follows first notice that start with any k in s okay what's the relation between k and m i claim k is less than or equal to m 
Why? Suppose k is strictly greater than m, then k will be greater than or equal to m plus 1. Yeah? That means, but m plus 1 is greater than x. This implies k is not in s. You understand this? If k is in s, I claim this. Suppose false, then k is greater than m. If k is greater than m, k is greater than equal to m plus 1. They are all integers. But m plus 1 by our choice is greater than x. Therefore, k is greater than x. If k is greater than x, k cannot be in s. Therefore, this, this is an element of s and every element of s is less than equal to m. Therefore, this claim is done. Right? Since m is the maximum, therefore it is also an upper bound. Whenever an upper bound belongs to the set, then it is the least upper bound and hence m equal to alpha. This is just a vindication of our intuition. What we have done? Okay, we satisfy that our intuition is correct. But remember, this is not needed for this proof. Okay, very good. I think that's enough for today.